Hey guys, we're going to do Acts chapter 15 today. We're going to finish Acts chapter 15 today, moving to Acts chapter 16 a little bit. And that's what we're going to do. Trust me, we really are going to do that. I see some doubters. You're wrong. It's going to happen. All right, let's see. All right, so here is where we were in our last class. Um, Paul and Barnabas talked about how they uh, were preaching to the Gentiles and that God confirmed it with miracles. Peter talked about how he brought the, the gospel to Cornelius and that God uh, approved of that. And then James, I didn't draw James talking, but James talked about how um, God's prophets in the Old Testament talked about how that this is going to be the way it was going to be. And they decided, yes, we should teach and confirm that people do not need to keep the Old Testament and keep the Old Testament covenants and all those sorts of things and the circumcision. And we're going to write a letter about that. And in the letter, we're going to tell them, stay away from idols, stay away from fornication, stay away from things strangled, and stay away from things uh, pertaining to blood. And really, the idea is stay away from your old Gentile idolatries. That, that's what that letter is about. And they send it to the, uh, up to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas and Judas and Silas. And then here was that letter in which it said, again, that same idea that they were talking about. And we said in the letter, it says, um, you can read the letter, but Judas is going to say the same sort of thing. And I drew it as if Judas is a loud mouth. Again, the emphasis in the letter is if you guys want to be careful about something, then be careful about idolatry. You don't have to be careful about the old law. Okay. We kind of have to do that long review because it was a complicated chapter. It was a complicated. Do, does anybody have a question about that stuff from last class? You're allowed to have questions. I don't know if you can hear it, but there's a baby screaming. That baby does not like that chapter. <laughs> but but you're you're not babies. I think you guys can handle it. All right. Well, let's just keep going on. And so when they were dismissed, they came down to Antioch, and having gathered the multitude together, they delivered the letter, the epistle, the letter, and when they had read it, they rejoiced for the consolation. All right, so here's a couple of vocabulary things that I want to, or at least one vocabulary thing I want to talk about. Have you guys, you guys have heard that the word epistle means letter? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, it's the same idea. And so sometimes people talk, a lot of the New Testament is the epistles, and that's just fancy words for the New Testament is full of letters, okay? And you can use the fancy words if you want, or you can use the unfancy word if you want, and you're just as cool. So they take the letter up to Antioch. So let's draw the little map. I don't think we're going to need a big map here yet. So here's the little map. And the Nile River down there, and Dead Sea, Galilee. And so the letter was written here in Jerusalem, and they bring it up to Antioch. And I'll draw the red line of travel. And they decided to do some sightseeing along the way, and they wiggled, and then they got there. Okay, so that's what <laughs> that's where the letter was. And they bring the letter there. I'll even draw the letter with the words and the envelope. Okay, and when they had read it, they rejoiced for its consolation. I don't know if you guys have Bibles open. Comfort is another word I've, I've seen used in there. Um, comforting and the helpfulness in that letter. Okay, now again, what was the big question that people were arguing about? What was the big question? Should the Gentiles... The way to worship? Um, not specifically the way to worship, but that's a close the way idea. To save. Yeah, parts of salvation and worship were all wrapped up in together. And the argument was, I think the Gentiles need to do the Old Testament too. That was the argument. And they they discussed it in chapter 15, and the apostles were saying, but God never told us to do that. God never said that the Gentiles need to do that. So they send a letter up that says, you guys, you're doing a good job. Stay away from idolatry. What about keeping the Old Testament? Do we have to keep the Old Testament? 
the letter didn't say anything about keeping the Old Testament. It said, just stay away from idolatry. Does that make sense? Now think about this. Um, how many laws are in the Old Testament? Like four? No. Four instructions in the whole Old Testament? There's a lot of instructions. A lot of instructions. So maybe like eight. Eight instructions. No. There's tons. So many things to do. You gotta take this animal, you gotta kill it. Billion, billion, billion. Billion, billion. Well, maybe not that many, but there's a whole lot. You gotta do this animal, you gotta kill it that way, you gotta take this billion, animal and kill it that way, you gotta wash billion, your hands, you gotta wash your arms, billion, you gotta do this, you gotta, billion, you gotta have the, billion, the fringes on your clothes. Billion, billion, so billion, many billion, laws. Billion. So here's the question Was anyone able to do them all? Yes. No. No. Not at all. No one could. No one could. I mean, of course, Jesus did. Jesus never broke a law, but no one could do it. And so think about this. The Gentiles are being told, you guys need to do the old law. And they're thinking, that much? And this letter said, no, guys, just, just worry about idolatry. Don't do, I, don't do the idolatry. Isn't that comfort? Isn't that encouraging? Don't you think they were already, oh, good. I'm already staying away from idolatry. So I'll just keep working on that. So I think that that's why they were comforted. Okay, so let's see what happens. And Judas and Silas, being themselves also prophets, <laughs> exhorted the brethren with many words and confirmed them. All right, so I will draw Judas, Judas the loudmouth. And I'm going to draw his eyes like he's really preaching. <laughs> Do preachy lines from his mouth. Mm, I didn't think about preaching lines. He's got his hair, he's so he's got jaggedy hair, and there's his footses, and he's just preaching up a storm. And the, you know his name is Judas because he it has Judas on it. And Silas, I'm gonna put Silas as a little bit more quiet. He's just no 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 with little closed eyes. No 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 no. I have no idea if these guys were like this at all, right? I'm just drawing them kind of different. So I'm going to draw Judas as a loud mouth, and there's Silas. Okay. Now, it said they weren't just Christians, but they were also prophets, right? So I'm going to go ahead and draw them in with green. That's the, the word, color we've been using for prophets and apostles. So they're not just Christians. I'll give them blue pants. Um but they're not just just like normal Christians. They're also prophets. And so they have the good word of God um, coming out from them. So there's blue speaking words. All right. There we go. All right. So um, the, many words. You know Judas is using many words because he's a talker, right? Many words. And he, they confirmed them. And after they had spent some time there, okay, they confirmed and exhorted them. They, they encouraged them, and they said, you, these are the right things. You keep doing these right things, and they're encouraging them so that they're good. Okay, and after they had spent some time there, they were dismissed in peace from the brethren unto those that sent them forth. Okay, so those guys, they walk back down. Did they go in a huff of anger? and grouchiness, and grr. No. No, they left oh. in peace. Remember that this was not a peaceful discussion. Remember how there was no small argument? But <laughs> after the discussions, and after the letter, and after P Paul, and Barnabas, and Silas, and Judas, it sounds like there was some pretty good peace. That's important. The Christians worked to have peacefulness with each other, right? All right. So they went back in peace to those people that had sent them out. So Jerusalem sent them out, and they go back to Jerusalem. But Paul and Barnabas tarried in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. Okay, so here is something I'm wondering. What do you think Paul and Barnabas thought was their primary mission? What was their mission in life? In the world. I think so. 
Was their mission arguing with people? Nope. No. Did they argue with people some though? Yes. They, they did, didn't they? Did they break their mission when they started arguing, do you think? No. No. Because the mission was teaching the truth and the argument was about people who weren't teaching the truth, right? So I think they stuck to their, to their mission. That's a good idea to think about what's my mission in life? What's my what purpose? What should I do? Right. Okay, cool. I just thought that was a neat idea. So they stayed in Antioch. Paul and Barnabas stay here. I'm going to put little squiggly lines of excitement to say they were doing stuff there. Okay, there they are, up in Antioch. And after some days, Paul said unto, let me, let me feel bigger, said unto Barnabas, what does he say? Let us now return and visit the brethren and every city wherein we proclaimed the word of the Lord and see how they fare. All right, that's fancy old-fashioned language for what? What does Paul want to do? He wants to go back to all those places and see how they're doing. Right? Yeah. Does he just preach and say, well, I hope they have a good life. Good luck, guys. No. He preaches and he oh. <laughs> Yeah, he wants, to, he wants to check them out and see how they're doing. So here's Paul, and he's got his good idea. And for some reason, Paul gained about 400 pounds uh, in this <laughs> drawing. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what happened. And so the idea there is if they go back, let me draw the map here, okay? Because I'm running out of space on that map. Remember, here's, um, I think it's Cyprus, there, that, 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 that. All right, so remember how they went from here originally, there's a place there, 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 there. This is basically the way their trip went, right? I can't remember every city name, but I can remember the pattern of the way it looked. That's a really important thing to think about, guys. If you remember just the general concept of this first trip, then you've remembered a big story of the Bible. That's pretty cool. So it sounds like Paul wants to visit all the Christians that they met in these towns. Now, was it safe for Paul and Barnabas to go there? No. Not necessarily, right? Oh, that was stoned in the yeah, so this is a pretty risky trip, but I'm proud of him for wanting to go visit. Let's see what happens. And Barnabas was minded to take with them John also, who was called Mark. Have you guys heard of the name John Mark? This is the John yes. Mark. So Barnabas wants John, but Paul thought not good to take with them him who withdrew from them in Pamphylia, and went not with them to the work. Do you remember that? John Mark went with them to this city and traveled through the island of this city. And when they got here, what did John Mark do? He went home. went home. Do we know why he went home? Does the story say? No. No. You could say, John Mark went home because he was a selfish jerk. No, don't say that. John Mark went home because he was a fraidy cat. No. John Mark went home because his mama was sick. How do you know? We don't know the reasons, right? Now, Barnabas wants to bring John Mark. And what does Paul think? No. No. Um, I'm going to draw them up there because there's just not a lot to draw on this story. So I'm going to draw them up on the board. Why? does it say that Paul doesn't want to bring John? He left them. Because he left them. How do you think that made Paul feel? Sad. Sad? Yeah. Abandoned, maybe? What was the other word? I said abandoned. Abandoned? Yeah. And maybe doesn't trust him after that. Doesn't trust him? Yeah. There's all sorts of feelings that we can imagine in this, right? I, I don't know which one. Angry, sad, disappointed, 
uh, scared that we can't trust him? We don't know. So I'm just doing this and this, okay? Smile for John Mark and a frown for not John Mark. Okay, and then here's John Mark. He's got a lot, I can't remember if I've drawn him before, but I'm gonna give him a long face and a long nose. Now, does the Bible say John Mark was a sinful man? No. Put parts of red on him so that you would know does, he left. Does it say anything that he was bad? No. No. no just he left. And so, do these guys agree? No. What are we going to do? I'm going to draw a red line. This is kind of hard. I'm going to draw. Disagree. Well, not right now, Alice. Hold on. I'm they going both want to disagree. But I think that he goes home to animals for the Bible more because they can, because he can preach a different spot and they can preach a different spot. Than him. Well, that's a good point. For the Bible more. That's a good point. All right, so let me draw these guys in green so that we can have a little bit of color. This is just a really interesting story to think about. Wasn't the beginning of Acts chapter 15 about a disagreement? Remember? Yes. The, the beginning of Acts chapter 15 was about a disagreement about the teaching of the doctrines and of, of, of the gospel. And should, should the Gentiles do circumcision and uh, keep the old law? Now, is there teaching in the Bible about whether or not you should do circumcision for the Gentiles or shouldn't? Did we find teaching in Acts chapter 15 about that? Right? Peter said, God sent me to the Gentiles and didn't tell me to do circumcision. Paul and Barnabas said, we went all over the place um, preaching to the Gentiles without circumcision, and God confirmed it with miracles. And James says, when we look it up in scripture, it talks about the Gentiles also. So they could use God's word. They could use God's will. They could put these pieces together and come up with, yes, this is, this is God's will. Okay, here's another, here's another disagreement. Okay, let's use the same thing. What does God say about using John Mark? Nothing. Can you look it up in the Bible? No. Oh. No. So can we know what God's answer is? No. No. Does that mean... So, like, what do you do? If you disagree with a Christian and God doesn't give you the absolute answer, that's a big question. Let's see what they do, okay? Let's see what they do. You could look in the Bible for, for what to do when there is a disagreement. Paul that's takes true. a different man and uh, Barnabas takes John. Yep. Well, let's just see how it goes. Because I think I think what you said, Layla, is what we should do, and we're doing it right now. We're getting ready for it. And I and some of you kids know this story, and so you know what happens. So that's a good job. You know how it's going to work out. Okay. So Barnabas wants John Mark, and Paul doesn't. The reason is because he he left. All right. For whatever reason, Paul thinks that's bad that he left. Okay. That John left. All right. That's written backwards, but you get the idea. All right. Verse thirty nine. And there arose a sharp contention. What does that sound like? Ar uh, argument. A yeah. Yeah. Heated argument. Heated argument. Does your Bible say heated argument? I'm going to put. No, it's just something I thought of. Yeah, I think that's a good description, though. I'm going to put little flames around Thanks. it. Was this just a little, well, I like pizza, but you like hamburgers? Hmm. That's it's nice. Not, it's yeah. not awesome. No, this is this is bigger than that, right? That's why I drew it in that color. This is hard. Can you imagine the hurt feelings? All right, let's keep reading. There is a sharp contention so that they parted asunder. They divided. They divided apart. One from the other. And Barnabas took Mark with him, all right, and sailed away to Cyprus. That's number one. And But Paul chose Silas and went forth, being commended by the brethren to the grace of the Lord. And he went through Syria 
and Cilicia confirming the churches. So maybe you can draw Silas on Paul's side and then draw arrows showing where they go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. So there is a sharp contention and they divided apart and one went one way and one went another way. All right, so now I'll draw Silas. Did I draw Silas before? Yeah, I drew Silas as the quiet guy. Um, what kind of hair did I give him before? Oh, okay, he's got this kind of hair. This is kind of ironic because they they disagreed about bringing someone because they because he separated and so they separated. It's interesting, right? But yeah, uh, and it's just kind of curious, right? Oh wait, no wait, Silas is also a prophet. I've got to draw him in green too. Okay, hold up, hold up here. But in fact. Uh, All right, I gotta write his name on it. Silas. All right. Okay. So these two guys have a big division about this guy, but it's not a division about sin. It's a division about opinions. I do want to bring them. I don't want to bring them. When we divide about opinions, I like cheese on my pizza. I don't like cheese <laughs> on my pizza. That's not a good thing to say. I fight you for what makes pizza. On your pizza. No, that's opinion. Opinion. It's judgment. Should these guys start raising fists? Punching. Yeah. No. No. Did they actually even do that earlier in chapter 15 when it was a doctrinal debate? They didn't fight. They just used God's word. Do they have God's word about John Mark? No. So you got to use godly wisdom? Does that make sense? Godly wisdom? Now, Paul didn't want to bring John. And so he says, I'm going to bring Silas. Here's something fun. Why do you think Barnabas did want to bring John? What do we know about Barnabas? Barnabas. What's Barnabas? He's encouraging. He's Mr. Encouragement. What did Barnabas do with Paul when Paul first became a Christian and came to Jerusalem and everyone was scared of him? Friends with him. Yeah, he became friends with him and he helped him out. So maybe, maybe Barnabas thinks, yeah, it was bad that John Mark left. But I'm going to try to help him out so that he can do better next time. Maybe something like that. And Paul is like, I get it. I understand your feelings, but I have a lot of work to do. I need to work for the Christians, not work for the guy. So I'm going to bring Silas. Okay, who is right? Both of them. Who is wrong? None of them. None of them. Do you see? Do you see this? We need to figure out how to disagree without punching each other. Yes, Alice. I think that it was a good idea to do that so that Barnabas could encourage John to be a Christian and teach, while Silas and Paul would um go preach so that there would still be people that's exactly it that's exactly it so this is one of those funny moments when was this disagreement was it probably hard and uncomfortable yeah, yeah. yeah. does that mean that it was terrible and the worst thing in the world and everyone should quit being a christian no no uh, Did it work out? didn't it work out to do good things yeah yeah let me erase the lower parts of their bodies. <laughs> they just have to agree to disagree. Yeah, sometimes that works out. Sometimes it doesn't, but sometimes that works out well. Okay, so. Uh, da -da 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 -da. All right, so there's the map, right? And... There were cities that they're in Antioch, and then there was the cities here and here. 
there were also cities here, 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 and here. So, um, let me see if I got another record. Here we go. Barnabas and John Mark are going to go this way. Okay. I'll put that. Barn. What? That's not how you spell barn. Dan. Barn and Mark. I wrote Dan at first. Barn, Mark. And Paul Silas are going to go up. So they're going to go to these places. I don't know exactly their order. What about I haven't the looked at the dogs? map yet. The last green dot. Is this your Dan? Yeah. Um, where did they go? Like, where did Paul and Silas go? Um, we haven't read that yet. Oh. But basically, they're going to go hit the, the cities to the north. And that starts showing up in chapter 16. And we've run out of time. <gasps> You'll never know. <laughs> actually, actually. You have my permission to read the Bible. It's okay. I believe in you. If you look at chapter 16, verse 1, you'll see one of the towns. One, two, three, four, five. The sixth word and the ninth word. So you'll start seeing where they go. But I'm not going to tell. You have to read it for yourself until we do our next class and I'll read for you. But that's chapter 16. Basically, they have their sharp disagreement, but they work it out so that Paul and Silas are going to go up here and Barnabas and Mark are going to go down here. Can I show my picture? So, do you guys have any questions about this? No. Isn't chapter 15 kind of cool? It's the chapter of disagreement. Yeah. And we learn a lot about how to be good people, even if there is a disagreement, right? I thought it was a little strange that Paul and Barnabas disagreed after being together and agreeing for so long. Yep. It's a little strange. Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask this. If you have a brother or sister and you know how to agree and play together, does that mean you will always agree over everything every time? Mm -hmm. No, that's yes. almost impossible. I never impossible. argue with my brothers. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You're so Of course we disagree. <laughs> and it's because my brothers are dumb, right? No. Yeah. No, it's because I'm dumb too. We're all we we're all kind of dumb, aren't we? So so even though Paul and Barnabas, are they good Christians? Yeah. Yeah. Are they doing good things? Yeah. yeah. Are they making their decisions for good spiritual minded reasons? Yeah. Yes. 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 Are they disagreeing? Yes. 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 But they work it out. They can work it out. It's okay to disagree. We won't die. Now, but here's the truth. Here's the truth. When you disagree with someone you really love, does it feel good? Uh -uh. No. Will you die? No. 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 Yeah. It is okay to feel uncomfortable because if you're with God, don't you think you'll feel comfortable again? Yeah. That's that's yeah. The about trust. And it's an important lesson for us to get into our minds. It's okay to feel uncomfortable and disagree. As long as I love God the most, more than any other thing, then I'll get back to feeling okay again soon enough. All right, do you guys have and any questions as, about that? And as long as we don't get angry and start fighting oh. because of the disagreement. Oh. And you know what? It's really easy to figure out disagreements when you're kids. It's going to be a lot harder when you're adults. So get your practice in now. <laughs> Trust me. Trust me. That's why having brothers and sisters is a blessing. It's wonderful to, ha it's wonderful to have annoying brothers and sisters and friends. Trust me. Trust me. It gives you good practice on how to be a good Christian adult. All right. Well, we've run out of time, and I'm going to let you go. 
So I will see you later. Later.